What's going on, TW fans? Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to another addition to our how-to series aimed at making us more knowledgeable anglers both on and off the water. We got a good one for you today. So previously, we have done a video on how to swap out the hook on your favorite hollow body frog. And we got a ton of comments about how to change out this skirted legs. So we got you covered today. We are gonna show you from step by step, beginning to end on how to swap out these skirtings to a brand new one here. So whether your frog is torn up from endless blow ups or you're just looking for that custom look or matching the condition or forage, it's really, really easy to do. So we're gonna jump in here just a second after we cover what you need for this one. So naturally, you will need your favorite hollow body frog. Next, you're gonna need some skirting material. There's a ton out there. You can use silicone, you can use round rubber, rubber whatever colors you want, whatever combination creation you wanna do, you can pick up your skirting. Next, all you're gonna need is a pair of scissors, of course, and then a tool to thread that skirting through. So there's a few of them out there. Check them out on tacklewarehouse.com. But if you don't have that tool handy, no big deal at all. You can also just use some heavy monofilament or fluorocarbon lime. You just tie a little loop knot at the end there. That's gonna work fine for you as well. You are gonna wanna go thick on that line though. If you go too thin, it might kink or even tear, you know, rip through your silicone or round rubber. Don't want that. All right, well, let's go ahead and let's jump right in with the first step of swapping out this uh, skirted legs. When you're starting this procedure, it can be very beneficial to get these hooks out of the way, just so you don't poke yourself, and it gives you more access to the body of the frog. So you can just rotate this, these hooks 180 degrees out of the way. There you go, we freed up the body. Now we can actually work with these tails. All right, next step, we wanna get rid of these. So again, these are brand new, uh, but if you have chewed up ones, it's just as easy, both the same. Another thing that can be helpful, you can see here, the openings for these leg holes, they come out at an angle. So if you just pinch this body, it's gonna align them a little bit better and then it's just as simple as pulling it out. Now this skirting doesn't actually have a knot in the middle, so it came out really easy. Some of them will have a knot or some sort of stopping device in the, in the middle, but you just work them out. These hollow bodies, uh, they're pretty durable, so you're not gonna damage the frog. All right, so now that we got our frog body loose, ready to go, we're ready to add the new skirting. First, we gotta prep our skirting material. So to prep our skirting material, all we're gonna need to do Again, uh, this is just gonna be tying an overhand knot right in the center. Again, you can use silicone, uh, round rubber, whatever legs you're looking for. I'm gonna go with this uh, nice bright chartreuse pop here. We got a lot of bullfrogs in our lake right now. They have some yellow on the bellies and the legs. So this is not only gonna match kind of the dirty water clarity I have, give it a little pop of color, but it's also gonna better match the forage in our lake right now. So to prep your skirt, all you need to do is tie an overhand knot about in the center here. So we got it shifted over just a little bit. There you go, pretty much even on both ends. And we'll tighten it down. Again, just like the silicone, this stuff is pretty tough. So you can cinch this knot down nice and tight. So there you go, right in the middle, got a little knot. That's gonna do a couple of things. One, it's gonna hold your skirting material together. Two, it's gonna add an anchor point when this is actually in the cavity of your frog. It's not gonna be able to pull out as easily. And three, it's just gonna increase the durability. So when you get a big old bass to you know, be all grumpy and hammer on your frog, it's not gonna be able to rip those silicone legs out of there uh, just as easy. All right, so now that we got our skirt prepped, it's time to actually add this thing in there. So this is where that skirt threading tool is gonna to come into play. Again, if you don't have one of these, some heavy monofilament line with just a little loop knot tied on it, you can pass it through these holes and pull the skirting back through. That's gonna work just as well. So just like when we were removing the skirting, you're gonna to wanna to pinch this body again to align these holes. It's gonna make it a lot easier for you to thread your tool in there or line if you're using the line. So from here, we're ready to actually add our skirting. So I can insert that little thing that's gonna hold really, really well. Now you can see I have an opening right here. That's gonna accept the skirting material. You're only gonna to wanna to slide, I don't know, an inch or so. This is a pretty narrow bodied frog. So I maybe can get away with less than an inch. If you put too much material in there, you can actually damage the frog because it's gonna to be tough to pull it all through. So we're just gonna start working in there. You can see it's gathering up right at the openings. Again, pinch that body, align those holes a little bit easier and you can just pull this thing on through. All right, so see, we worked through that silicone. Now my tool came free, and we just gotta pull this through the rest of the way. So you can do this part by hand. Might be helpful to tighten your knot one more time. Got it nice and tight here. It's gonna make that knot a little bit more compact. Pinch the body, slide it in just past the first opening. So now that knot is right there in the center of the cavity of that frog. So these legs aren't gonna go anywhere. Doesn't matter if you have a 10 pounder blow up on this thing, it's not gonna rip those legs out. You know, if you get fish after fish after fish, sure, they're gonna tear them up eventually, but you can just do this process again. All right, so the next step is just gonna be rotating that hook back to its correct position. It's easier to do it now. So I'm using this, uh, this round rubber material that comes kind of all together like this. So it just kind of makes it less strands in the way as I rotate this hook back over. But if you're using silicone material, just make sure you kind of thread them out of the way as you rotate the hook over. All right, so there you go. 
We got ourselves set up here. Now we just gotta free up these strands and trim the skirts. So one helpful tip with this one, what I like to do is take a binder clip and whether it's your workbench, your dining room table, coffee table, whatever you're working on, it can be helpful to clip this to your coffee uh, or your dining table, whatever your workbench or workstation is gonna be. And it's just gonna allow you to pull and stretch against this as you cut it. And you can see just by that one little pull there, it kind of separated some strands. So let's go ahead and do that now. So slide your binder clip onto you know, your coffee table, dining table, whatever workspace you're using here. Make sure it's on there nice and secure. It's gonna allow you to pull on this thing pretty tough. And then you can slowly trim. And you'll see as I'm trimming, the strands are gonna kind of break free on their own. It's just gonna save you a little time on the back end of flaring these things out. Boom. So you see, we got a real good start there. There might be one or two that we're gonna have to actually, you know, peel apart, but it's gonna look good. So you're gonna do the same thing on the other side and it's gonna turn out a little something like this. All right, to finish this up, all we gotta do is trim our legs so they're nice and even. So just take your scissors short as long as you want it. A little bit longer might give you a little bit more breaking, a little bit more action, more of a full profile, a little, you know, thinner, shorter legs, will be a little bit more finessey, kind of be able to walk it a little bit faster if you're using open water, whatever the case may be, but that's it. It's that easy. All right, so again, whether you're looking to stretch your budget, refresh a damaged, torn up frog, or you just want that custom look, or you're trying to match a specific forge, it's a quick and easy task, one that every angler should know. All right, that's gonna wrap up this how-to. Thank you so much for tuning in and learning something with us. As always, give us a thumbs up if you learned something today, and let us know if there's something else you wanna see done. Maybe another frog customization tip. We already did the frog hook changing thing. You guys requested the frog skirt. You got any other requests for frogs? Maybe changing colors, bending out the hooks, any other frog customization tips or whatever you guys wanna learn, drop a comment, let us know. We look forward to learning with you. We'll see you next time.